Today I'm going to show you how to read and understand your sleep data on your CPAP machine and then how to use that data to optimize your CPAP pressure levels. The goal is to get our pressure levels as low as possible while still maintaining good control of our sleep apnea and snoring so that we get the best night's sleep possible. Hey guys, my name's Nick and welcome to my channel CPAP Reviews. It's great to be with you. For those of you tuning in for the first time, this is my education channel on snoring and sleep apnea. So if that's a topic that you're interested in, please consider subscribing and joining our great community. And for the regular viewers, I uh, hope you're all doing well and thanks for your support. So today we're basically gonna be fine tuning our therapy pressure levels. So your pressure levels can either be too high where yes, your snoring and sleep apnea will be well managed and well controlled, but at the same time, you know, the machine's gonna be a lot noisier, you're gonna get a lot more mask leaks, you might get a lot more CPAP side effects like dry eyes or air in your stomach, or the pressure's gonna to be too low, and in that scenario, you know, it's not gonna be controlling our sleep apnea and our snoring, so we're not gonna be waking up feeling, you know, like we've had a really good night's sleep. And we wanna get them so that they're just right and by that I mean we want them to be working at the lowest possible levels while still controlling our snoring and sleep apnea. So we're getting a really healthy night's sleep. Now, for those of you new to CPAP therapy, CPAP machines have two menu systems in them. They have the basic patient menu, which many of you will be already familiar with, but they also have this hidden away secret menu that we call the clinical menu. And it's in the clinical menu where we can change things like our pressure levels. So it's really important to learn how to access your clinical menu on your CPAP machine so that you can change those more advanced features that are really gonna make a big difference to your CPAP therapy. Now, if you're unsure on how to do it, feel free to put a comment in the comments section below with what machine and model you have. And that way I can send you a video on how to change your clinical settings on your machine. Now, for today's demonstration, I'm gonna be using a BMC Luna G3 machine. It's got a great big screen which makes viewing your data very easy, but it's also really easy to change the clinical settings on this machine. Alrighty, let's have a look at some of this sleep data. So, let's scroll across to report. All machines should have some sort of data on them. Uh, this one's got some great data on them. And because it wasn't used last night, all these values are at zero. So I'm just gonna scroll across to the 90 day average here, which is gonna give us 90 days of average data. And now we have all the data variables that have popped up. And the main ones we wanna have a look at are our average pressure, our P95 pressure level, and our apnea hypopnea index, or how many apneas hypopneas we're having on an hourly basis. So this is 0.4 at the moment, which is fantastic. Anything less than five is considered great. So if you can get that value to less than five, it means that you're getting a nice healthy sleep. The average pressure level here, the average treatment pressure, because this machine's an automatic machine and it's gonna vary the pressure minute by minute throughout the night, depending on how we're breathing, Basically the machine's taken all the different pressures that were provided during the night and averaged them out to give us that average pressure. So it just gives us a guide as to sort of where the pressure levels you know, are around. And then we have this value here, which is fantastic, called the P95. And what that tells us is that for 95% of the night, the machine was delivering nine centimeters or below. So it was only above nine centimeters for 5% of the night. All right, so I'm just gonna jot those values down on a piece of paper. But even if you don't have any of these pressure statistics, as long as you have access to your apnea hypopnea index, this number down here, then even with a little bit of trial and error, you can work out and fine tune your therapy levels. But I'll talk about that a little bit later. All right, so now we're going to go into the settings to change some of our pressure settings to optimize it. But before I do, I'm just gonna show you. So if I just click this click wheel in here and go to settings, this is the basic menu that I was talking about. You can see here, there's no actual pressure settings. But if we go back out again, and this time I'm gonna hold this button down and also the button that's just down here, the home button. If I hold those two buttons down simultaneously, 
it's gonna open up a different menu and that's the clinical menu that I was talking about. All right, now we have access to all these pressure levels. Plus we also have some more comfort features and some maintenance features up here that we can go to. But we're looking at the therapy today. So this is, you can see here, four and 20. So this is the minimum level four, maximum level 20. Four's as low as this machine will go and 20's as high as it will go. So this has basically just come out of the box and hasn't been touched. The pressure levels haven't been optimized. But what we want to do is we want to fine tune it. So the first value we're going to do is the max auto. And this is as how high the machine can go. And we want to set this to our P95 level, which was 9.5. All right, the reason we wanna cap this at 9.5 is because we want to eliminate all those excessively high pressures that are gonna cause mass leak and discomfort during the night. So some of you might say, why not just leave it at 20 and let the, let the automatic just automatically adjust the pressure wherever it needs to go. And that's fine, but we want to try and aim for comfort as well as apnea control. And capping your pressure at that P95 level means that we're still gonna control 95% of our sleep apnea, but at the same time, we're eliminating all those pressure levels that might be excessively high. You know, this machine might be going up to 15 at some points during the night, and, and it's gonna wake us up and cause all these mass leaks and cause all this drama. Whereas if we can cap it at 9.5, we eliminate all of that, yet still maintain really good control of our sleep apnea and still have a good apnea hypopnea index. Now with the min auto, for this example, we could just leave it at four because our apnea hypopnea index is already so good. You know, it's less than one. But if we were really struggling to get our apnea hypopnea index below five, we want to have our min auto level closer to the average pressure levels. So our average was coming at 7.5, so I want it closer to the average. All right, I might have it at seven. And that's going to give me a greater ability to get that apnea hypopnea index less than five and get a more healthy night's sleep. But for this example, we can pretty much just keep it at four because the apnea is already so good. Now. Even if we didn't have any of those pressure statistics from our sleep report, let's just say you don't have any of that information, you can literally just do some trial and error. So what I'd do if I had, if this machine was on 20 and I had nothing else to go by, what I'd do is for the first night, I'd have the max at 10. All right, I just put it at 10. And then after one night, I'd go to my sleep report and I'd have a look at what my apnea hypopnea is. Now, if my apnea hypopnea index is less than five, I'll keep bringing, the next night I'd bring it down again. So I'd go into the clinical settings, go to my max auto and I'd bring it down to nine. And then I'd run it for another night. Have a look again in the morning at what the next value is. If that value all of a sudden starts to jump up to six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and it's going up, then I know that that max auto level is too low. The pressure needs to be able to go higher in order to control my sleep apnea, all right? But even without having access to any pressure or any data, you can basically just do some trial and error based on your apnea hypopnea index, all right? So let's just say that I had it at nine, and then I checked the next morning, and it came in at 15 my apnea hypopnea index. That's pretty high, it's going up there a bit. I need to have this a little bit higher. I might try 12 the next night and see how that goes. And then, okay, I try 12 and then I look at it the next day and all of a sudden the apnea hypopnea index has dropped from 15 down to seven. I know I'm, I'm near where I need to be, all right? I might bring the, you know, the min up a little bit just to give it a little bit more sort of support at the lower. But you can basically, you know, just have a play around with these two values to find what is comfortable for you, but also then use your apnea hypopnea index to guide you as to whether or not the therapy is effective in controlling your sleep apnea. And that's sort of how we do it. <laughs> pretty straightforward, huh? <laughs> as I told you, it's pretty simple. 
Now, if you're on a fixed pressure machine, I'm just gonna change this machine to fixed pressure, so a CPAP machine, you know, where the pressure is just at one level. So I'm gonna change this mode from auto CPAP to, to CPAP. All right, and now my treatment pressure is 10. I'm just gonna put it at 10, same thing again. Do the same thing again. I'm gonna run the machine for a night on 10 centimeters, and then in the morning, I'm gonna have a look at my report, and I'm gonna have a look at my apnea hypopnea index and see what it's like. And if it's below five, the next night I'm gonna go down to nine. And if it's still below five, the next night I'm gonna put it at eight. And I can keep bringing that pressure level down as long as this value doesn't go above five. And guys, you can also go on how you're feeling as well. You know, if you're feeling you know, that you're not getting enough pressure or you're feeling that, you know, you're not getting that good quality sleep, then you might just wanna you know, bump up that pressure just a little bit to see if it does influence the way that you feel as well. Um, or if you're getting a lot of mass leaks and you know, you're struggling with the therapy, you might wanna bring that pressure level down just based on how you're feeling, just to see how you go with it, okay? But always report back to this apnea hypopnea index as your guide to how your therapy is really going. In all right guys, so here's the take home from today's video. Now, if you're someone who's using the therapy and you're doing fine, you've got no problems, then look, you probably don't need to optimize your therapy levels as long as your apnea hypopnea index is below five. But if you're someone who's struggling a little bit, maybe you're struggling with mass leaks or a few of the side effects from CPAP therapy, or maybe you're just feeling a little bit flat and you're not really getting the results that you're after, then it really does pay to optimize your pressure settings and as long as you have access to your apnea hypopnea index data, which you all should have, and can figure out how to get into that sneaky little secret menu that I showed you and change some of those pressure levels, then with a little bit of trial and error, you can really fine tune and optimize your CPAP therapy pressure levels so that they're working at the lowest possible rate while still maintaining good control of your snoring and sleep apnea and still giving you a nice healthy sleep and that, that's what it's all about. And if you can get it working at its lowest possible levels, then it's gonna really help improve things like the noise of the machine, how well your mask seals on your face, it's really gonna improve those mask leaks and the, ther and the therapy comfort. It's gonna be much easier to breathe out against the pressure. Um, you're not gonna get things like dry eyes and dry mouth and you know store wind in your stomach and all those other things. So it really will improve your therapy overall but certainly don't be afraid to have a play with your machine. You can't stuff it up, it's only, it's only air pressure. And if you do stuff it up, then I'm here to help you. You can just put a comment in there and we can get you back on track pretty quickly. But anyway, I'll leave it at that. I hope you're doing well, thanks for watching the video. And until next time, uh, sleep well and look out for one another. Have a good day, bye.